All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to my channel. I am really excited today. I have a guest. Uh, her name is Ella, and we just met at the conference at the iBay. It was always refreshing to meet somebody from uh, the my side, my native side of the world. And uh, Ella was kind to join uh, the this podcast to talk about her experiences and her uh, dating related business. Uh, Ella is a matchmaker. And I've, I'm going to let her uh, the opportunity to introduce herself and who she is and what she does. So welcome. Cool. Oh, hi, everyone. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for having me. Um, mm -hmm. Happy to be here. Ma, well, ask me whatever you want to know. Yeah, tell us uh, what do you do and um, who you are and what do you do? And by okay. the way, Ella is in Florida. So you all be jealous. <laughs> oh, well, it gets chilly here too, um, like down to 70s. Terrible. Oh, it's horrible. <laughs> Terrible. Uh, well, my name is Ellis Kadira, like you said. Um, I am originally from Russia, uh, southern part of Russia. And I mm -hmm. came here about 17, 18 years ago, somewhere in there. And mm -hmm. uh, I've done a lot of stuff in between, but I have been doing matchmaking for the last eight years and I've officially opened up the business about two years and mm -hmm. uh, yeah so I've been matching and I have a few married couples I have a couple engaged um, still working on a couple more and on and on mm -hmm. a lot of fun. how did you so basically what do you do the um, basically then old-fashioned matchmaking old-fashioned matchmaking and also what are your demographics what kind of people do you match yes uh the way i do it is old-fashioned uh i still mm -hmm. write down on a piece of paper mm -hmm. <laughs> um, i have pictures of everything and i can mm -hmm. look at it and see what it goes it was what you know who goes where and mm -hmm. i do um profiles i interview people personally everyone clients matches Anybody that ever gets in my database, I uh, try to meet them personally. Unless they're out of state, then it's a little different. Mm -hmm. uh, we do video calls, something like this that we're doing mm -hmm. right now. Um, the, uh, what was the other thing you asked? <laughs> uh, what are your demographics? What kind of people do you match? What's your sp specifics for what you do? Right. Well, um, the name of my company is Ella's Euro Matches. Me. Mm -hmm. European matches. So the first couples that I've uh, created were actually people of European descent. Mm -hmm. We also call them, we also call them expats, basically somebody who's uh, uh, either first generation immigrants or second, third, you know, they have mm -hmm. from European countries, um, you know, Russia, some, some uh, South America as well. Um, mm -hmm. My demographics are, I like to work with people that are, have some kind of international descent, you know, European. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I feel that I can connect with them more mm -hmm. on a cultural and a background basis. Um, as far as age goes, anybody 30 and up, some, mm -hmm. sometimes I can talk to women who are a little bit younger, but only if they're European descent um, because mm -hmm. of the maturity level and you know the <laughs> there's a culturally it's a little different mm -hmm. say Russian women by the time they hit to be my age they're expected to be married and have kids and the whole nine yards right yes Whereas American women they're still chasing their careers they're still chasing mm -hmm. degrees um and marriage and kids is not something they're concerned about quite so much um so so yeah and uh, that's and as far as the oldest I mean, I just married off a couple. She's 74 and he's 60. Oh, and <laughs> this is awesome. This is, this is great, though, because, yeah. you know, sometimes I feel that, you know, older people are, you know, somewhat discriminated. And, you know, you just don't know. Some people had long marriages. Some people had never been married. I think everybody has a chance. You know, this is wonderful. Though. So you, you work basically with all ages, just... Uh, usually around starting at around 30 where people are serious so you don't really do the dating you do 
no. matchmaking, right? Yeah. Yes. So what is the difference so everybody understands? Um, it's, it's quite simple. Matchmaking mm -hmm. clients, they're um, ready to settle down. They're ready to mm -hmm. start families. And they're looking for a long-term uh, relationship. Where mm -hmm. dating is, you're still shopping, right? Yes. It's like buying mm -hmm. a car, right? No one mm -hmm. goes and buys the first car they ever see, right? They're mm -hmm. shopping around. They're looking at which one they want to do. They keep trying different models to make sure that whatever one is best for them, right? So that's dating. <laughs> you're shopping, you're looking around, you're not quite decided what you mm -hmm. like um, or what kind of person you want to be settling down with, or you're just not even interested in settling down, which is fine, you know, everything, mm -hmm. fine, whatever it is. Um, I don't do that. I don't, uh, I had a couple of people contact me and they're interested in dating. Uh, I've had women and men actually. Mm -hmm. um, a couple asked me if they could get, you know, six, seven dates a month. And uh, I, uh, I turned them down, of course, because I don't deal with shoppers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So just initially, you want to, to, to work with people that are basically uh, need help to, to end the dating. <laughs> right. They want to, you know, they just want to have somebody, uh, some long term and some serious stuff, right? Yep. Okay. I have to ask you now, how did you come up with this idea? You know, as I just want to say, it's always so exciting for me to meet, uh, you know, Russian, Ukrainian, uh, post-USSR entrepreneurs. So mm -hmm. it's just like so exciting. So uh, can you share, like, how did you, um, did you just wake up one morning? Let me be a matchmaker. <laughs> no, no. Um, it's funny, actually. I didn't think of it like that. I didn't know it <laughs> matchmaking to begin with mm -hmm. when I started I, uh, I, I matched a couple of my friends uh, one was completely incidental I mean we were out and about and uh, I was talking to this guy next to me we were actually in the Russian club in Miami believe it or not they exist oh nice <laughs> oh I believe it <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh, and you know I spent a few hours talking to him and he was just amazing and I haven't ran into guys that are so smart in a long time so smart and young in the club usually <laughs> at that hour you know usually people just you know the, the brain capacity kind mm -hmm. of by that time um, and then I had a friend who was very single and the same age and I thought the two of them would be great together and, uh, and I was right. Uh, they're still married. Uh, I think they just celebrated their, God, I don't know, seven years together, six, something like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so inspiring. Yeah. So, um, and then I continued on and I matched up a few more friends and, uh, and then, you know, I just keep doing it. And it's, it's a lot mm -hmm. of fun. I enjoy it. And I, then I ran out of friends to match. <laughs> yeah. Basically made it, uh, the, the last couple of years I made it a business because it's, it's a lot of fun. I want to do it outside of just friends. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's very rewarding. So basically this profession had chosen you. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. just, you just start doing it and, and, and having fun just with friends. And then, um, and then, you know, you realize you would like to expand, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. I really feel like our true passions in life, they choose, they choose in us. Sometimes we don't even know why we're doing something. And sometimes we're not getting paid for it because we're just sort of doing it for fun. But then you realize maybe that's what you were meant to be doing. And then you just bring it up on the next level. Right. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. this is interesting. So what, um, what are your requirements? How does your service work? And... Um, can you tell a little bit more? Do you, uh, do you also, I know that, you know, matchmaking service is now a business for you. So you have, you know, your process, your fees and all of that. How does it all work? And do you take people in your database? For example, um, I don't really know much about matchmaking, especially in the U.S. So mm -hmm. if you can share a little bit. Um, yeah, there's, I have a couple levels of database. Um, I have one premium. Mm -hmm just paid for um, mm -hmm. not a lot it's actually pretty little and i they're the first mm -hmm. to be looked at once uh, a client mm -hmm. comes in and i feel that one of these database uh members are a match then i contact mm -hmm. them. um again everybody's interviewed um 
I, I make sure that they're real people. I see them in mm -hmm. person. Some of them I run background checks on. Uh, the premium ones, of course, was their permission clients as well. Um, mm -hmm. No one goes on a date and it's a surprise of any sorts. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody's uh, checked and vetted. Um, mm -hmm. Clients, uh, the same thing, but a little more in depth. I do. Mm -hmm. It's a personalized kind of work. It's concierge service, basically. And all they really have to do is show up one time to meet me and do the interview and that's it. And then mm -hmm. when they come to date. Okay. About anything. Do you, I have two more questions. Uh, the next one is, uh, do you, uh, would you recommend uh, this kind of service for people who maybe uh, want to meet, you know, Slavic women, because my channel is about Eastern European women, but for some reason they are not able to travel to Russia or Ukraine, or just they would like to meet somebody who's already here for mm -hmm. a number of reasons. Would that work? for people to meet uh, Russian and Ukrainian women in U.S.? Oh, absolutely. There is a, there's a lot of uh, Russian women all over U.S. Really, we have New York, of course, mm -hmm. like um, some in California, Colorado, I even heard just about mm -hmm. everywhere. Houston has a community. Um, I don't honestly think that you would mm -hmm. need to ever leave U.S. if you wanted to meet a Slavic woman. There's mm -hmm here and um and there's no risk of you know there's a there's a there's a lot of risk of flying over and being tricked um by yeah. agencies that run these sites mm -hmm. um, it's re really hard to tell which ones are true i know a couple yeah. of makers out of ukraine and russia who are good people you know they're real mm -hmm. but then there's a lot that, that are not and, yes it's uh, true which is like anywhere else, truly. Yes. Yeah. Plenty of stuff here, too, that you can run into. And get those yes, absolutely. But it's true. You know, I probably have 100 videos about the scamming, which I don't like doing, but I do, I'm do. i doing them to, to help people to find real matchmakers, either in Ukraine or here in U.S., as mm -hmm. we're talking now, because I just feel heartbroken that uh, Russian and Ukrainian people get so misrepresented by scammers. So it's just so unfortunate that it's part yeah. of, you know, reality. So basically that is, you know, when we talked with you at IDIT conference, I felt that this could be a great alternative for those people who uh, would like to also maybe get to know each other better, being able to see each other more often, even if they live in different states, you mm -hmm. know, you can still meet every other month and really establish something. Do you have a history of that where, you know, maybe somebody met uh, each other, but they were from different states and they were able to build a relationship and then eventually move to one together? Um, or you mostly have local. And is it possible that, for example, um, you will have some, you know, man from, I don't know, Denver, Colorado, and you have somebody in Miami, like, would you consider helping them if they're in a different state, but they are willing to come and uh, they are absolutely. serious? Yeah, absolutely. I don't see why not. I have a large database of uh, mm -hmm. Slavic women, Russian, mm -hmm. some Ukrainian, um, anybody who's around the corner as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's always possible as long as people commit to mm -hmm. making a serious thing. Um, usually they come to that point after their job is in a good place and they don't have to, you know, slave at it quite as much. Mm -hmm. Especially entrepreneurs, anyone who's an entrepreneur knows what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Start <laughs> off and it's never ending hours. Um, mm -hmm. Once they get to the point where it's kind of good and they can take a, look, a second look at their personal life and look mm -hmm. for, for them, then they made different commitments. Then perhaps at that point, um, relocating is okay. Or mm -hmm. if, it, if the business doesn't allow, then they're looking for women that can relocate. And yes. Lot, that's also possible. Mm -hmm. I think when two people meet each other and they really, you know, meant to be together and it's in one country, uh, right. I think there are no obstacles. Sometimes you have to wait a little bit till maybe a relationship develops or, you know, you can you can make things work. I don't know if that's a, the Russian and Ukrainian perception of you can make things work, you know, go through obstacles. But I really think it's definitely 
um, less of an obstacle when you are in one country. So for some people, you know, some people can maybe have even health issues to fly. I mean, people have different circumstances. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and sometimes it's, it's the work where, you know, p some people can only take three days of work or five days of work, which makes it hard. But do you feel that there is also another factor that in some ways, I just made videos about Americanization of Russian and Ukrainian people. Uh, and um, by Americanization, I really meant the learning how things work here and mm -hmm. adjusting. So I think for some people, it's that would be our last point today. Do you would you agree that for in some ways it's um, sometimes could be more beneficial when you meet somebody and they already been in the U.S. for a couple yeah. of years, so they kind of know how things works. Yes, aside from the whole legal perspective that someone from another country like Russia, Ukraine, you know, mm -hmm. they would need visas and papers. They might need to learn the language. Um, that those are some obstacles from meeting mm -hmm. internationally, but meeting someone here who's Slavic, who's been around and who's been in the mm -hmm. system and working and, you know, they know the ways of the land, it's mm -hmm. easier. I mean, our mentalities are um, a bit different. Yeah. Slavic people from, you know, American, a bit different talent. Um, have somebody that's been here for, I believe, I'd say about a year or so. They they get yes. integrated, right? They get Americanized. Yeah, and that. it's not a bad thing. No, of course not. I mean, I got Americanized. I came here a long yes. time ago, and uh, yes. I, I I enjoy the process. It's a lot of fun, but yes. it's, it is easier. I think we you can mm -hmm. meet someone who's been here for a while. Um, simple things you know like you can refer to the same movie and it's like oh i've seen that movie you know like mm -hmm. a joke from the movie you know, yes. where, you know if you meet somebody overseas and you mention some kind of clint eastwood movie and they would be like oh I don't know. <laughs> yeah I don't yeah. Know. Well, yeah i mean we do watch hollywood mo movies over there too but i agree like you are when you integrate it's just easier to connect but you do not some men were commenting under my videos and saying, oh my gosh, we don't want you guys, you know, you girls to lose yourself. But do you agree that, you know, we can't really lose our core values because we grew up over no, there? No. It's not going anywhere. No. <laughs> people, people don't. I mean, you, mm -hmm. I've met people that have lived here for 60 years and they're the same people mm -hmm. from back then. I mean, they're also American. You hardly can tell if they even have an accent. Yes. But the core values are still there. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not just the movies, it's just being able to understand references, you know, conversations and dating and the, the first mm -hmm. of dating are crucial. Yes. And also, you know, maybe that point that being a little bit more independent, because there, there is a stage when you just come here, at first you completely rely on your husband if you came for K1. So it's guys for you to decide, you know, what you're capable to provide and what you, how you can support somebody because there is also this thing that the lady that lives here for a while, she's, she has just a bit more independency. She's not, you know, she knows how to use the, the, how to drive, you know, she has your license, she has a credit mm -hmm. card. I've never, I've always deal, dealt with cash, you know, I'm here for 11 years now. So when I came here, I was asking like, how do I use credit card in the store? <laughs> like I've never bought anything online. I didn't drive. So it's a, it's a lot of things. It's not impossible. Everybody doing it and, but it takes time. So if you are the kind of guy you are um, not very good at, you know, you want somebody a little bit more Westernized, somebody who is just a bit more independent, that could be an option too. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Yes, like, do you, uh, did you feel uh, when you came here, how long it took you to, I know you came here really young, but how long did it take you to feel a bit more adjusted, like, confident, mm -hmm. and just be honest, just tell how long. <laughs> Let me see. You know what? I have to say a year. Because oh, that's, mm -hmm. A while. Well, when I came in, I started to work immediately. Um, I worked for my father and it was my father. I, I'm, I'm a retired mm -hmm. uh, equestrian athlete. 
And uh, so I did that for a while and I wasn't concentrating on school or I wasn't planning on making friends because I was plenty busy. But, uh, but mm-hmm. eventually, you know, as a young soul, I, you know, I needed some friends and I wanted mm-hmm. to be out and about. And I think within a year I, I integrated and I kind of also realized that, uh, you know, the things I couldn't do in Russia, that was all possible here. You know, back then when I came, you could still get in a club before 21, totally legal. Mm-hmm. Right? And then shortly yeah. after they changed the laws and now it's 21. But that was a lot of fun. And I grew up as a police officer. Clubs were not in my future or past at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. So my grandma would not let me go out, um, which was good, I guess. I could probably make it a, a lot of trouble. But uh, mm-hmm. I came here and it, it was fun. Once I think the integration in the society and trying to find some common ground, maybe some friends that you can uh, relate to, um, that's very mm-hmm. important. Everything else yes. kind of yes by itself, naturally. Mm-hmm. Um, but mm-hmm. you know, we're humans. We're our social creatures. It's Once true. You that social thing that you could do, then everything is easy. And then yes. easy, honestly. Yes, I was quite delighted to meet you because I didn't know how many, you know, if I, I didn't even think of necessarily, you know, meeting somebody from my background. So that was, it's quite refreshing. But at the same time, you know, when you live here and you adjust it, you're delighted when you meet somebody from your culture, but am- Americanization kind of helps you to relate to, to all the other people and make friends, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what you just just what you said so wow this is so awesome thank you so much for sharing uh, your journey a little bit of it you know what you do and how you help people i am um honored to have you and everybody uh, who's watching this video uh if you have questions comments or you would like to reach out to ella maybe you are the ella's perfect client maybe that's uh you tried for many years uh doing things online and you realize you just can't make it happen you can reach out to me uh and ask uh to connect you with ella or you can i will post ella's um website on this video you can directly reach out and see if ella could help you so we are all about connections on this channel (laughs) <laughs> Thank you so much, Ella. Um, Thank you. Yes. Is there anything you want to wish or uh, say in the end to uh, my listeners? Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> what do we have? We have Valentine's coming up. So happy mm-hmm. Valentine's, everyone. Um, enjoy mm-hmm. your time. If you have somebody special, go do something fun. Don't stay home. Uh, if you don't have something, somebody special, go and see if you find one. There's plenty of singles going out that day because it's Valentine. Mm-hmm. Hope it's yes. not lost. So good luck. <laughs> yes, happy Valentine's. And uh, we will really appreciate your feedback. And um, everything is possible. Do you agree? Everything is always possible. Never give up. And have a wonderful holiday. We we should probably be back soon with some more topics to discuss. Thank you so much.